to the uh, next installment in the raw 700 build video. Uh, today we're going to start uh, by working on the tail. Um, I've gone ahead and gotten most of our parts laid out and ready here so we can start uh, building things up. We've got some uh, clear synthetic grease we'll use on the tails in the bearing. Um, and we're going to start uh, by working on the tail rotor itself. So pretty straightforward build here. We'll take our tail rotor, insert our shaft here, and then we've got a couple of dampeners here that we'll put in here and here. I'm just going to kind of partially slide them on and then I'm going to go ahead and grease things up. Uh, and actually before I do that, let's go ahead and slide that half out. Let's, let's get a little grease going inside here. So I'm just going to use my finger and kind of smear some around in here just so we get the back side of that dampener. It's got some grease in there. And not going to hurt anything if you get a little much in there. You'll just, it'll just end up kind of working its way out. Um, I like to kind of move it all around in there. And then the reason I kind of slide the dampeners on First, and speaking of that, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clear some of the grease out of the hole. Um, and that is just so that what I don't want is grease getting in the threads on the end of the tail shaft here. So I've got a fairly clear passage through here now. So I'm just going to kind of slide that through. Use some paper towel here, kind of take off what just ended up on the tip there. Yeah, see, I still got some in there. It happens my all kind of fish all that grease out and I'm gonna jam some paper towel in there as well on the end of the all and just kind of whoops work it around in there get any grease that gets in there out there we go got most of that out there all right so I'm gonna go ahead and slide the dampener on the end and then I'm gonna put some more grease on my finger just kind of work it around the dampener there Making sure I get all sides, trying to avoid the tip and slide it in. Same thing on the other side. Just going to kind of work a bunch of grease around there and then slide it in. Push them firmly into the tail hub here. And then we've got these two spacers. So there's a few spacers here. There's the skinny ones. Those are actually going to go inside the uh, tail blade grips and then these uh, fatter ones here will go against the dampeners, one on each side. And yeah, inevitably when you start playing with grease it gets kind of everywhere, so it's, it's already in the threads on the end here, so I can see that I'm going to take a minute here in a second and just really work on clearing all of that out of inside here. On both sides. I'll usually grab a Q-tip, I think, is probably the thing. Uh, I don't have any of those immediately handy, so we'll use paper towel. I'm going to wad it up, slide it in, and just work it around. Get that grease out of those threads. Same thing on the other side. Wind it up, get it in there, and then just work it around a little. Get that grease out of there. And then a little acetone on the end of a Q-tip I'll follow up with here uh, in a bit. Okay, so we've got the tail hub going. We've got our spacers on the outside of our dampeners on each side there. Uh, so the next step is our blade grips here and here. And go ahead and pack them full of our uh, thrust washers here and then spacer as well. So same thing here. So these particular thrust washers, they have a two different versions. Uh, this size here has a larger inside diameter and this one here has a much narrower inside diameter. And the way you figure out which one is which is you literally just slide it over the tail shaft and wiggle it. And if it's like this, whoops, pops off there. If it's like this, where you can wiggle it back and forth, that's your larger inside diameter. So that one will go towards the center of the hub inside your blade grip. So I'm going to go ahead and get a hex driver to sort of stack these up on. 
and we're going to stack these up in order. I've gone ahead and laid everything out in order already. Uh, so that's how I'll stack it on the driver. I'm going to go ahead and pack these thrust washers with grease. Work that in. Slide it on our driver. Take the next. Again, we've got our thrust washer here. We've got sort of the cup side and the other side. I'm going to pack the cup side full of grease really well. Grease all over it on both sides. That's a little much. I'll just keep some of that on my finger for later. And I'm going to run the cups symmetrically. Looking at the manual, they want the cups going in. It doesn't really matter as long as you're the same on both sides. That's how I feel about it. I've heard good arguments for uh, both directions uh, from a lot of people. But cups to the inside works for me. And then we've got this uh, spacer here. We'll then go last. All right, so we've got all of that stacked up, ready to go. I'm gonna take some paper towel and just kind of wipe my fingers here. And then I'm gonna slide all of that stacked up into our blade grip here. So as you can see, there's just like on the main rotor head. Uh, and speaking of just like on the main rotor head, the radial bearings are already pre-installed in the uh, inside of your uh, Blade grips, you don't have to do that. As well as the other radial inside there, you can see there's one on this side as well. Those are pre-installed. So you get the driver lined up through those two, and then we're just gonna kinda shimmy all this around. That little washer is gonna be a bit of a problem child because it's skinny, and so it'll wanna kinda dance around here a bit. There we go, got everything in alignment. And you use the driver to kinda push everything down get it seated well, pull the driver out, and then I'm going to go ahead and slide this assembly onto the motor shaft. We managed to do that without knocking anything out of place. All right, that's one half done. Same thing, we're going to rinse and repeat for the other half in the opposite order. So, take our narrower thrust washer, get some grease in that track, put that guy on first. And then our cupped thrust bearing here. Pack that cup side full of grease. Again, this is just clear silicone grease. I use Triflo brand. And then same thing, cups toward the inside. So the open face of the thrust washer is what I call the cup side. Uh, and then we'll take our larger diameter thrust washer. You'll know if you get this wrong because the tail will act funny. It will not feel smooth. It'll behave badly and you may not be able to quite put your finger on it, but you'll know something's wrong. And then our spacer last. All right, so we're all set there. Again, we're going to take some paper towel, just clean our fingers off with grease to avoid getting it where we don't want it. And then we're going to slide this half. Oops slide uh, our stack of bearings, etc., into this blade grip. And, ooh, we got lucky on that one. That went in smooth. Sometimes it's fussy and things will catch on things and they just kind of won't cooperate. But that stacked nicely. And then we're going to go ahead and slide this blade grip on here. See if we get lucky here as well. Should all just kind of pop. Oh, look at that. That's money right there. Okay. Great. So the last thing we need to do is get these two screws uh, thread locked. Just like in the main rotor head, we're going to need uh, two, uh, what does this say, two and a half millimeter driver. So I'll put another one over here somewhere. Here we go. So we got a couple of two and a half millimeters so we can sort of counter tighten against each other. We're all done with the grease here. So we'll get one in first. that into the threads, just like always. And then the trick here is not to disturb this beautiful job we've done of getting everything stacked up right. So this one I'm not going to turn upright for you because I risk all the other washers falling out. But now that we've got that screw started, I'll show you this one. So we'll go ahead and get some Loctite on this guy. Okay, 
So now, if you look in here, you can see there's our stack of washers, our uh, spindle shaft there. It's sort of right flush with the top of that washer. I'm going to try not to get any grease on the screw, just get it right into that feathering shaft. And then we've now got both sides in there. We're going to get two drivers, one from each direction in, and then we're going to counter tighten against each other. Nice and tight. It's okay to use a little bit of force there. Then the moment of truth. We take things and we spin them. How do they feel? Feel notchy or scratchy? Do you feel resistance? Or does it feel butter smooth? And this feels butter smooth. Love it. Alright, now do you see all that grease that's kind of oozing out of the center of the tail hub here? We're going to go ahead and clean a lot of that out. Um, that's just sort of extra grease floating around. It's just going to go spitting everywhere as soon as we spool up the heli. So we'll clean some of that extra grease out and uh, pretty happy with that. That's uh, feeling really good. It's really important every time we do a step on this tail that we check things, make sure they feel smooth, kind of work them in, make sure there's no play, right? If I pull these apart and push them together, I shouldn't feel any, like, you know, any ability to move them in this direction or that direction. So you sort of try that, rotate them. This just feels like butter, so yay us. All right, I'm gonna go clean some of this grease out. We'll come back and we will work on the pitch slider. pitch slider. This is the piece that will slide up and down the shaft and change the pitch of our tail blades. Uh, and looking at this step here, there's some pretty small parts in this uh, parts bag. So be really cautious, especially with the little spacers so that they don't roll off your uh, table. And those are these little guys that are going to go in what we call the dog bones. And the dog bones will fit in here and go back and forth onto the ball links that will eventually end up on the tail. It's a really good sign when I put these in here that they move freely. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is take these tiny spacers. Just kind of see them there. I'm sure they just look like a black dot on camera. And we're going to slide them in the smaller hole here uh, on each dog bone. So I've got one in there. You can probably barely even tell it's there, but it's in there, I promise. Take this other tiny spacer, trap it in here before I lose it. Suddenly realizing my hands are a little, a little dirty. I was just out doing some yard work, so forgive me. Uh, and then snuck in here. So uh, we've got those two spacers in. The next thing we're going to do is insert these uh, tiny uh, socket head bolts here through the dog bone into the threaded side. So we're gonna look through here and you can see there's a recess where the head of the bolt will go and this is the threaded side and they're calling for green Loctite here. So we'll go ahead and get that out, get a little bit of that. We're gonna use the awl to apply it. Uh, and why is that? Because I only want it in the threaded side here. I don't want it on the dog bone at all. Not only is it plastic and I don't want it touching, but it will uh, seize that up. I want free movement in the tail. Anytime you have any kind of binding in the tail, it's gonna cause major problems, uh, tail wags and the like. So I've got a little tiny dot of green Loctite right on the tip of the awl, and I'm just gonna work it into the threaded side here. And I'm just gonna get it into the threads. And I'll end up wiping a lot of this away. I'm just sort of making sure I get it in all the way around. And then I'm gonna take some paper towel, fresh piece here, and I'm just gonna wipe it from underneath. And also I'm gonna go on top and make sure there's none up there. So, all right, so I think we're good there. I'm just gonna make sure there's plenty in there. It looks good. All right, so we're gonna take our dog bone and push it through. And then take our bolt. Again, no Loctite on it currently. It's just gonna get it when it gets through to the other end. And then there it is. The other thing I'm gonna do is just back it out just a little bit. But now that I've got that screw in there, I'm confident that the green Loctite's not gonna go where it shouldn't. So I'm just gonna rest a drop there. Ah, shoot. 
<laughs> and you can tell, see, not edited. If I drop it, I show it. All right, and then tighten that down, and then I'm gonna take a paper towel, just wipe that extra away, and then just work this back and forth. All right, so while I have that here, showing everything out, I'm just gonna make sure this dog bone moves freely, and it does. It should be, you know, you can flick it from side to side. It's nice and loose. All right, it should really, and that'll loosen up a little more over time, but it's pretty darn loose now, which is great. You just want it to have zero resistance there. All right, so with that side done, let's go ahead and do the other side. Again, we'll just slide that dog bone in there and get it lined up. Oops, but before I do that, we'll get a little green Loctite in the side there. Oh, that was a good one. It was like it formed a little bubble that you probably couldn't see and then it kind of popped right inside there, which means it's probably really well distributed. And then we're just gonna wipe any excess off. All right, get the dog bone back in. The hole lined up, get our little bolt through. Whoops. This is a little fussy. And you think these are small, and if this is the first kit build heli you're doing, you should try doing this on a 380 or something smaller when you have to build the tail, and all these pieces are half this size. Good fun. So I'm going to just get a little bit of the threads bit. Now I've got a little recess. I'm going to get just another little drop of green Loctite in there that down, let it sort of meet the bolt, tighten it up. Not going crazy here when you tighten these, just sort of snug it up. The green Loctite's gonna do the work. What you don't wanna do is tighten it so much that these two sides close up and then there creates friction in here. So again, nice smooth movement there. Looks good. And the only other thing to make sure is, this is probably a little hard to see, but it's uh, detailed clearly on the manual. There's a little S right here on the dog bone. You want one to face up and this one to face down. So this guy right here faces up, this one faces down. Uh, it's detailed in the picture. They sort of call out the S, that's your left side. Now that's just so that the ball links here will uh, close in the right way. And with that, that's our pitch slider uh, ready to go. Okay, so now with our pitch slider all set, tail hub all set, it's time to get the balls on the uh, blade grips. We're gonna use red Loctite for that. So we'll get a little bit, uh, again the manual calls for green here. I like red in that spot. Both green and red are, have superior hold to blue, so we're in good hands there. So on, these will both go towards the inside. So the ball will go on this side, uh, such that our dog bones do their job. And there's no thread there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of red Loctite on that ball. Oh, maybe a lot of it. <laughs> kind of went for a little bit of a swim there. Goodness. Let's get that spread it back out correctly. Great, and again, these balls, if you ever order this as a spare part, will, or the blade grips, I'm sure, come with the balls, so don't worry about permanently attaching these. All right, so you will need a couple of drivers here to work against each other. I don't think that's a, nope, need another one and a half. No, no, it's a two. It just apparently wasn't lined up correctly. Oh, we'll get in there. There we go. That was right the first time. All right, so we're just going to counter tighten these. Don't go crazy. That's a pretty small bolt, so if you put too much hood spa on there, you're going to just snap it. Uh, right, let's get some red Loctite on here. Work that around. Get rid of the extra off my finger through, grab our ball here, get it started, grab a two millimeter driver, Oops. And get that lined up, and then again, snug it, use a little bit of force, don't go crazy, pretty tiny bolt, the smaller these bolts are, the less uh, resistant to snapping and cracking they are. All right, with that, we've got 
uh, everything from page 24 done. Uh, so we can move on. I'd just like to do a quick scan of the page and uh, we're good to go. I guess they do show us uh, just sliding the tail pitch slider onto the shaft. So we'll go ahead and get that far. All right, moving on to the next page. Looks like we're gonna tuck our tail rotor assembly aside and uh, let's get out the parts for our tail group assembly here on page 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that stuff prepped and then uh, we'll come back and pick it up with the tail assembly. So moving on to our uh, tail assembly here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is install the tail bell crank base. So there's a recess here right in the tail case area that this will go. And in the manual it'll point out that there's a small lip on the bottom side of this. So find that lip, make sure that side's facing down, and then just pop that in this little recess. Go ahead and get some Loctite on your bolt, spread it out, oops, and then kind of pop it through, you're actually going to go through the side of it, there's a nice access hole on the opposite side, since I dropped this I'm going to double check it's still lip facing down, it is, go ahead and get one side lined up and then just kind of just barely snug it down, get our other bolt, get a little Loctite on there, the excess hole through the hole in the tail case and then go ahead and snug both of these up make sure we're sitting flush in there and then I seem to have managed to get Loctite kind of everywhere in here so I'm going to take a moment to grab some paper towel and just clean that up. You know, I get it on my fingertip from rubbing it off and every now and then I forget which finger it is and I touch all the wrong places. So, Alright, I've got that cleaned up so that's done. Alright, so Next things we have to worry about are, I'm going to do all the stuff on the outside first, I think, before I start adding the belt and the tail fin and everything that makes this kind of cumbersome. So let's take a look at the bell crank lever assembly here. So the first thing to do is orient it like in the manual. There's a stripe on one side here. Bring that up. Make sure that's facing down and your shorter arm is there. The logo here should be facing the right way up as you orient this. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our bread Loctite. We still got some out from recently and get some of these uh, servo balls installed. So the first one you want is the one with the threads at the bottom. And then there is a washer, just this tiny little guy. I'm gonna try and pick it up. Come on. There it goes. And then, actually, I'm going to hold on to the washer in my hand and get the Loctite on here first, I think, is the order to go. So, roll that in red, got it, drop our washer on there, okay, and then this guy is going into the end of the short arm here, so let's go ahead and get him in there, snug that guy down, just make sure we get any of that red Loctite that might have dripped out of there. All right. So we've got that one there with the washer, and then we're gonna use this teeny tiny bolt here. This guy was super dirty, so make sure you give him a good cleaning. Um, and then I'm gonna use some red Loctite on this guy as well. No part of this coming undone. And this guy is gonna go down through here into this Turbo ball, and we're going to take a two millimeter driver on the side of that, get it lined up, and then counter tighten these. Don't go crazy, that little tiny bolt will not uh, take a whole lot of torque before it just snaps. All right, so now we've got this looking good. We've got our ball on the bottom, we've got one on the top here, and then we're going to take this bolt here, it's going to come up through the bottom. And then it's going to screw into this guy here with some green Loctite. I'm going to actually use red here, is my preference. Um, but I want to make sure it's through. There's a bunch of bearings in here, so I don't want any of the red to hit that bearing. So I'm going to push the screw through, 
and then kind of, this is why I like putting them on plastic too, because you get some flexibility, right? So I can actually hold this here, roll the screw, push it out. I'm gonna let gravity keep the Loctite out of that bearing, working into these threads here. Again, a lot of that excess is on my fingertip. Keep gravity, rolling it down, and then we're gonna screw it in down here through that lip. Great, and then we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Three millimeter, two and a half for another driver. Again, we're just gonna sort of snug that. Make sure this moves, it should be that easy, right? Every single part of this tail we're gonna play with and make sure it moves easy. All right. Like butter. Okay, great. So, now we're gonna start making this thing a little more cumbersome. So we've got our bell crank, we've got our assembly on completely. And now we're gonna work on getting our tail pulley on. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our tail belt, just fold it up here and slide it through things because from here on out we're going to want that in position. We're going to take our tail pulley here and you want the side with the threaded uh, area that'll take the uh, set screw on the right hand side, the side towards me, and we're going to get the tail belt there. Okay, We've got that going and we're just going to get it kind of loosely positioned between these bearings. So these bearings here are already pre-installed, you don't have to do a thing to those. All right, so we've got that sitting there loosely. We've got our set screw ready to go. It's time to grab our tail assembly uh, with the pitch slider already on it. And you know, it's not called out on the manual, but we could go ahead and install the links onto the balls here. There's no reason we shouldn't. So I'm gonna get my ball link pliers here and just get these snapped on. I'm just going really slow because that's just how I roll. Whoops. Now I roll slow because the reason, you wanna make sure that S is on the outside, right? So that's why I don't, the other reason I don't use a ton of forces because if you feel resistance, something's wrong. That's your red flag. So go ahead and roll that that way. Get this guy lined up. Again, S is on the outside and boom, there we go. Our link is on. And then this movement right here should feel like butter. Shouldn't feel it should be smooth. Should feel no resistance there. Uh, that feels pretty good. I might put a tiny bit of three in one uh, or a little bit of trifle lubricant on that shaft in a minute, but uh, for now I think we're okay. All right, so let's get this guy positioned out of the way. And then our, so if you look, and our tail shaft, there's a flat spot here on a little divot. That is where we want that set screw to land. So we're gonna be very careful to make sure that we make that happen. So I'm gonna rotate the tail pulley such that that little hole is facing up so I can see through it. And then I'm gonna start sliding my tail shaft in and through here, and working it in. And then you can see they've sort of painted a little dab of black paint in there. So you can see really well when that's visible. So I've got everything just resting there in place, all lined up with uh, that flat little divot piece there. I'm gonna roll this set screw in plenty of red. I've heard of folks having these uh, pop out on the raw, so do not be shy with the red Loctite here. And then we'll keep everything still. And really, really suck this down. There we go. Time for something, pop that out. You can see there's a little red Loctite splooge in there, so we're gonna jam some paper towel in there, really work that out. Don't want any of that extra floating around in there. Coming up the works. All right, so we got all that out. So now we should have a nice, free moving tail. Gonna sort of move the belt through, that feels good. And you can just kind of check it without, feels good. Great. All right, so. That 
feels good. So what is our next step here? So we've got our set screw and our tail pulley. We've done this. The last piece of this is to get our uh, tail fin bolted in. Uh, you would go ahead and put your stickers on your tail fin at this point. I'm gonna pull something special out from my friend, Mr. Rob Cherry. And we've got some nice 3D printed black and white pieces here. We're gonna go ahead and throw on that. All right, so we're gonna grab a uh, two and a half millimeter driver, get some Loctite on these guys. And go ahead and get this mounted against our tail case here. Get it through there. And then boom. Just gonna kind of snug that one, get the other one in. And if you think about Rob Cherry's 3D printed parts, you know, it's just double-sided tape in here, but uh, let me tell you, I have, uh, I don't know, probably 50 flights on another set in my other RAW, and I've had zero problems, so a little tiny tape holds real well. All right, so we're just snugging these up here. I don't want to go crazy tight here, just snug with a little extra. All right, and with that, Last thing we want to do here is get this ball into the pitch slider, which I'm starting to wonder if I should have done already. Uh, that is going to be tricky to get in. All right, so after some further thought, I think what I'm going to do here is pop the bolt out right here. Doesn't take a ton of force there. And then we're just going to Do this the easy way. So we got that out, and then we're gonna drop the ball into here and screw this back in. That's simple. So you could wait until last to do this, or just do what I just did and pop that in like that. So now we can check the whole tail moves nice and easy. So when I flip this guy here, it should be nice smooth movement, shouldn't feel any resistance. Should be real easy from anywhere in the system to get this moving uh, really easily without a ton of force. So make sure that the, that's all feeling free and you will have a much happier tail because of it. All right, with that, that is our uh, tail assembly good to go here. And uh, let's move on to the next step. So next step is to work on our tail servo installation. I've gone ahead and plugged the Theta Razor T1 uh, tail servo into a servo tester and uh, centered it up. So the next thing we'll want to do is install our servo horn here. According to the manual, they want it facing this direction, so and then pointing straight up. So. We're going to want to get this aligned as close to 90 degrees up as possible. That's pretty good there. And then we'll go ahead and install our uh, servo screw here. We're going to want a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on that guy. Get some of that going. And still plugged into the servo tester. I want this thing this way. Stay centered until we get done. Make sure everything's looking good. Keep taking all the Loctite off. On my finger, there we go, that's better. All right. And then we'll go ahead, get that Loctite servo screw in there. And while we're here, just for fun, I plugged into the tester. Have you ever heard Theta servos, but they make no noise. I'm pushing on this thing, trying to get it to move, and it is just got crazy hold. And, and just to prove that's working, now I can move it easily now that it's unplugged. But man, you can jam on these things, push on them real hard, trying to get them to move past their holding point. And uh, not only do they have tons of torque, but they're super quiet. 
Um, so if you're speaking of SAB helicopters, if you're building, say, a Kraken with that um, carbon fiber or fiberglass boom where the servo noise is sort of like echoed like a megaphone, Thetas are a great choice there, uh, tail servo-wise, because you won't have to listen to them. All right, so next thing we got to do is get our servo ball installed. Here, so I've got the screw already through the servo arm. Just going to get a little bit of, whoops, get all that off, Loctite on there. Wipe it off of the servo horn there. We'll come back and get that cleaned up. Plenty of red on there. And then we'll counter tighten these so it's one and a half in the screw and a two millimeter driver in the ball. And we'll just tighten those against each other. And there we go. That's good to go. We'll take some paper towel and just clean that up. Get a little bit of extra tied around there. And then that is tail servo is good to go. Uh, I'm going to get the rest of these uh, screws that we'll use to mount it to the bracket uh, happening uh, and cleaned up and ready and then we'll come back. All right, so we've got our screws all cleaned up and it's time to get our tail servo mounted here. So I've gotten the servo oriented, so we've got the spline pointing straight up, uh, the head of the servo down this side, and then this bracket here has got the SAB logo on it, and we're going to sort of flip that towards us just like that. And then we're going to go through our servo savers here, through this way, through the uh, uh, servo itself into the bracket with, of course, some Loctite going on here. So let's get a little more blue going here. Again, these little bottles only keep for about a year, so you know some of you might be going, "Why is there such a big glob? You're wasting it." Because I obviously don't reuse that for too long. But the truth is, it'd help if I put Loctite on the correct screw. Let's try that again. Uh, you still probably won't get through that bottle before it expires, so don't stress. All right, so we go through the servo saver. And into our bracket here. Again, I'm just going to kind of finger tighten here. So we get things a little further along. Now, get this pulled down into the bracket so it's nice and supported, and then I'll go ahead and tighten these screws down. Same thing here. Looking good. Let's go ahead and get this piece uh, installed in the frame. I'm going to go ahead. I can find the twist tie that was holding these servo wires together. Here it is, and wrap these back up so that they just stay out of the way. Great. All right. So, looking at the manual here, we're going to bring the body of our helicopter back into the frame here. And this is going to install on the back right side. These bolts here. And looking at the manual, we've got our bracket running in this orientation here. It's going to go upright like this. You can see the two bolt holes here and here. And that is going to go into the frame on the second and third. Let me see if I can position the camera here where you can see this and get a pointer here. So there are holes here in this rail. Let's get that servo lead out of the way here. Head out of the way. Goodness, there are all kinds of stuff in the way. So you can kind of see here. There we go, that's better. So we want uh, this hole and this hole, there'll be one left open there. And our bolts will go in through the top there with some blue Loctite on them into our servo bracket such that the body of the servo kind of sticks out the side of the frame a little bit. And that'll fit over that blind nut that's back there that you'll see when you're uh, installing your own. I'm gonna get some blue Loctite if I can see where my, here it is here. 
like we could use a little more on there. These are kind of important uh, screws. Let's make sure these get some lock time on them. What do you say? All right, so our driver here. Get some lock tight on there. Spread it down the threads. Really get it in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pre sort of stage this in the second to last bolt hole there. Slide the piece in again. I'm just going to finger tighten. See if I can show you that a little better here. There's the tail servo. We got one bolt in. Let's get the other going. Some Loctite on that guy. Into those threads. Oops. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. All right. And then I'm just going to sort of hold, see if I can capture this here, slide the piece right against the side of the frame, the back side of the side frame. Just tighten these down really snug. I don't want any play here at all. Uh, or you'll see it in your tail. Right. And with that, our tail servo is uh, firmly mounted to the frame. All right, next up is going to be uh, working with the tail boom. Next step, we have to take our tail rotor assembly here and work on getting it uh, into our tail boom. So, first things first, how do we know which end it goes in? Well, one end of the boom here has two holes on either side of it here and on the opposite side here. And then you're gonna use the lettering on the boom to orient which way is up. So it's gonna go like this. And then now that we know which way is upright, we just use the tail fin to set our orientation because obviously that goes that way. So we're going to get our tail belt and uh, get all the twists out of it, figure out which way it goes here. And then what I've gone ahead and done is I put the tail push rod together and then I just put one of the ball link ends on it such that I can take the zip tie they provide in the kit and just loosely zip tie through the tail belt. Let's go far and then what I'm going to do is just drop this into the boom and push that in there and just get the whole zip tie and all that in there. Start shoving it in until you start to see the push rod come out the other end, like you see here. And then I'm just going to pull on this and until we start to get taut. And you can see here, I've started to see the belt come out this end. And then I'm going to pull it this way here and start to line this up. So I'm not worried about twist of the belt yet. I'll check that in a minute. So I'm just going to. Slide it and it actually, I mean, it's snug, but it's not really that difficult to get in. So I'm just going to pull the tail belt taut here. Again, not worried about twists yet. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut that zip tie at the other end. So let's slide this this way so you can see just to get that out of the way. Don't need that anymore. We've got enough of the push rods. Goodness, apparently, I got to hold the zip tie. There it goes. All right, put our push rod aside. Got our tail belt taut. Let's come back here now to this side. Now, we've got these four little bolts here. Now, I've heard from some folks who have a raw that they've had some problems with these bolts back here. And the problem seemed to be a couple fold. Uh, either they back out um, from the vibration of the tail and loosen up, or if you over tighten them, you can actually crack the boom in this area here. So you're going to want to just be real cautious here as we tighten these down. We're going to snug them uh, and since we've got red Loctite it's going to hold plenty. 
Uh, we're not going to over tighten them. So we'll get a decent amount of red Loctite on there, take a little off, and then just screw these in and snug them down. We're not going to go crazy tightening. So that's snug. We're going to call that good. Again, this red Loctite is going to do its job and really hold these real well. So we'll get a little more red on there. Oops, a little too much on my fingers there. Took half of it off of there. Refill that in a minute. So these just drive right in with no problem there. Again, just snug it up, not over tightening. Just going to wipe off the excess there. looks nicer and then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. So obviously be careful of the tail rotor there. We'll just gently lay that down. And a little more red Loctite here. Go. So a little bit more on the screw. A little off. And we'll get this guy in. And I mean, I'm just using a tiny bit of force on these screws. You don't need a lot. This is really just to stop. I mean, the tension on the tail belt's gonna hold this thing in. These are really just an extra uh, piece that stops it from rotating inside the boom. Um, so, snug that up and then take some more paper towel and we're just gonna clean up any excess Loctite in there. All right, and with that, we now have a mounted tail. All right, next step from here is going to be to look through the boom, and I'll just sight through the boom by looking through the end here with the boom. You can actually see pretty well in there and see when it's twisted. So I'm going to, so I don't even see my head in the shot here. I'm just looking down the boom and I know that's right. So that's oriented straight up and down and I'm just going to lay it on the table sideways with the boom. And I know that this is exactly uh, parallel with the tail rotor there. And that is it. We're ready to uh, move on to the next step uh, where we will install the tail boom clamps in the frame and then uh, slide our tail boom in and uh, work our way towards a completed airframe. So I'll come back with that. All right, so we've got our tail put together. Uh, we've got it in the tail boom. Now it's time to work towards uh, merging this with our uh, main assembly here. So it's gonna start uh, really looking like a helicopter in uh, just a few minutes here. So first things first, uh, one step uh, we didn't touch on from the previous page just quickly. If we go back to page uh, 26, we need to do the uh, push rod support. Uh, here just has to slide onto our boom and they point out about where it goes. They give you an approximate measurement, but you can just use the uh, decal here. It essentially bisects the L at about the elbow is uh, approximately where they'll want it according to the photo. So just to orient this the same as the photo, it goes this way facing with the open end of the hook towards you. I'm just going to rest the boom here, squeeze that. Slide it right over. Um, it's pretty loose, so you should be okay, but you might want to sort of bend it open as you go across the letters here. We don't want to scuff any of this stuff. Really pretty graphic up. All right, so if we bisect the L about here, uh, from far enough away, you'll still easily be able to read the uh, text. So I'm just gonna flip it uh, the way of the screw, which they provide here, and this is just plastic into plastic, so no Loctite here. I'm just gonna go ahead and, looks like it's already slid on me a little bit. Just loosely put this in. I'll tighten this all the way when we actually have the push rod and I can see sort of where the push rod wants to fall. I'm just gonna look at this, make sure it's lining up here. Uh, that's still pretty loose. So I'm going to leave that there just as a friction fit for now. Just don't want to forget to put this piece on. Uh, if you do, 
gonna be we have to undo work you've already done uh, once we start getting this mounted to the fuselage. All right, so with that, let's uh, jump back to page 27 here and uh, dig back in. So I'm gonna tuck this aside for just a moment over here, and then we're gonna come back to our main body of the helicopter here. So we're gonna be working in this area back here and inserting these uh, boom support clamps. Um, now, a couple notes about which clamp goes where. So this is one of those times where they've put a nice logo on one of them that'll help us orient this graphic. So you just line it up just like it is in the manual. This will be the rear uh, rearmost bracket here. So that'll be this guy. Uh, it goes on the last set of holes uh, on these two rails. Uh, mounted inside here, so it'll sit right about uh, here. And then this other piece here has this sort of indent in it, and out of the way uh, here. And then that, if you look in the manual, goes on the left-hand side of the fuselage. And then this will mount in the one, two, three, fourth hole. So it's really the next available hole after our bolt there. So roughly about there. So we've got these loosely in place here, but we're going to pop them out one at a time now that we know their orientation and we're going to pre-insert these lock nuts and bolts. So we've got these little mini lock nuts here that'll go. There is a nice little recess for those here. So we're just going to drop the nut in there, just kind of rotate it a little bit till it falls into place. Make sure you get the nut in the right side. You want to leave this loose just enough that uh, you don't have to try and insert the nut while it's inside the fuselage. Uh, fuselage, uh, main body. Uh, sorry, recovering airplane guy from many years past. Um, then we'll do the same thing, only this time now we know the secret. That's where our screw goes. Take the nut and we'll drop it in on this side. Grab the right size driver. Boy, this was just a slew of errors that were all my fault. Get the nut to kind of cooperate and drop in there a little bit if we can. There we go. All right, and then I'm just gonna loosen it now that it's all captive so that we won't have any trouble sliding our movement. All right, so we've got these two guys together again. The SAB branded one will go such that if you're standing behind the helicopter, you can read it upright. And I'm just going to get that lined up with the body there. And then we'll get some Loctite going here. First bolt. And it's just two bolts per. With the Loctite, of course. These are metal to metal here. Uh, just barely get the head into the recess and then stop there before you tighten it down, get the other one in so you get these nice and square to the frame. And honestly, since these bolts are so easy to reach, it's probably fine to tighten them all the way now, but I sort of feel like I want to put the tail boom through here uh, just to help square these to the boom and the frame sort of all together. So I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. All right, this guy here, remember to check that this sort of bump out here is, uh, I'm just trying to get this oriented to you all, is on the left side of the frame and then is the next available bolt hole. A little tricky to see in there unless you've got a really bright light where the frame hole is. I'm going to sort of slide past it and then slide it back. I think we're loosely in place there. Really hard to see. This one might be a bit of an adventure, but once we get the first bolt uh, seated, it should be easier on the second one. Uh, you'll notice that the lock nut is on the bottom of the rearmost uh, boom mount and on the top on the front most. Oops, I'm just gonna pull this servo lead out of the way so I can get the 
driver a little more square. Yeah, we're hunting for the hole here. Oh, where are you? Come on. This is going to be a little fussy. Well, let's see if we can get the other side first. We'll just let that guy hang out there. Get a little locked out on this other bolt. This one almost makes me wish this step happened before we installed that other uh, cyclic servo, the elevator servo there. Because it sure would be easier with that out of the way. Right, this looks pretty lined up. Let's see if we get this in. Get out of the way there. Oh, oh, there we go. We're getting that one in. Again, I'm not gonna go super tight on this. All right, we got one in. Hopefully that now basically makes this guy, and it does, just fall into place. All right, that wasn't too bad. So, now we've got those tightened. Let's go ahead and uh, get our boom out. So everything's loose. We need to hit all four of those bolts. Uh, the next thing we need to do, we're just gonna move this out of the way for a minute, is assemble our uh, special clamp. This is a tool we're essentially building that's gonna help seat the boom. Um, but before we do that, um, get this built, we really should just get the boom in and then we'll build that around it. So. I may have been a little premature when I said, let's get rid of this. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back. Get this kind of centered here as best we can. And then let's go ahead and grab our boom and we're going to slide this in. Now, I'm just going to check the belt for twist again. All right, so we're back to being dead in line. Now, what we want to do here I know the main rotor is going to spin clockwise and the tail rotor will spin counterclockwise and it looks like the tail pulley will go in this side will roll towards all right so this is going to twist this way all right so the twist we want is from upright this way so from upright you twist in the clockwise direction and now it'll spin counterclockwise when the main head spins clockwise so we're going to pinch the belt just to get it through the first boom mount, pinch it through the second, and then we're just gonna pull that through there. I'm just trying to get right into this first boom mount. Okay, so now I'm into both boom mounts just barely, and then it's at this point we're gonna take this nifty 3D printed tool here, and I'm gonna rotate the whole heli sideways here. Just gently set it down. And now this tensioner here is kind of in the way. So SAB has made this great little piece here that uh, we can use to sort of pull this up. So I'm pushing with one finger here. I'm going to click this onto the tensioner and it just sits against the frame. And all it's doing is just holding that tensioner out of the way for me, which is awesome. So uh, I'm going to check. All right. So this is where we have to be careful so I believe once I pull this taut that, yep, that's still correct so now we're going to slide the tail boom in basically right up to the idlers and we're going to flip this over All right, so now we're looking at the underside here and we've got to get our belts over our tail pulley here so Kind of most of the way there and we can probably do that whole bicycle chain trick where you just spin the head and it'll kind of follow the teeth around it's tight even right here and i can't move it any looser but I'll go this way see when i turn the head it just drops right in okay so now we're good so we're just going to do a quick check before we do anything else so let's get everything back upright we're going to spin the head clockwise and i know you can't see uh, the tail right now, but trust me when I say if when I go clockwise, that's going counterclockwise. And then we're going to listen really quiet and make sure we don't hear the belt twisting and rubbing against. So that sounds great. All right, so now we can do a couple of things. So the first thing we're going to do 
is to go ahead and tighten these four bolts. Now that we've got the boom resting in here, uh, we know that these boom mounts are nice and square to the frame, to the boom. So we're gonna get those going. I just didn't wanna have any reason for them to be slightly out of skew. It's highly unlikely, but you know, doesn't hurt me at all. All right, so we've got those tightened now. So now we can push this aside. It's starting to look awfully cool. Um, and we can do this. Now, something I want to quickly point out here uh, that you can't really see. So, you know what, let me show you in the manual. So, in here, in the manual, you see this little keyed spot right here that we talked about being on the left? What that's for is there's a channel in the side of the boom here. And now that I've got it lined up and we've slid it into here, this boom can't rotate. It's guaranteed square. Our tail fin is gonna be you know, straight up and down. It's not gonna be rotated one way or the other. Um, it's dead square. So very clever design with the boom here from SAB. Um, not surprised, but uh, pretty cool. That, uh, Cause you know, one of the hardest things to do if you've built a pod and boom helicopter before is this process where we're gonna tension the boom and the tail belt and try and keep the fin square and try and tighten the screw all at the same time. Now SAB has done a ton of thought here and really thought through how to sort of kick this thing's butt. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and start building the tool that's gonna to make this happen. So I'm just gonna slide this back just a little bit and we'll look at the manual here. A lot of this we're gonna build right on the boom so I'll end up pulling this back shortly here. But reading through the manual here, let's just get our pieces oriented, looks like uh, this guy here with the writing on it again. So it's removed before flight. Very cute, SAB. Uh, obviously, you don't want to leave this here. It's just dead weight doing nothing for you. And we've got a set screw. Now, this set screw has an open end for a driver. Probably possible to get that to focus. So that's going to want to be on the... Side facing out. So, just looking at this here as to how this whole piece works. It goes right here. So, they show it going in from, I see. Side here. So, we'll get that piece here. All right, now we've got that there. Next thing is to take this long bolt here and come through this side here, pretty simple. And then we're gonna put just this lock nut on the other end. This just makes a hinge that we'll use to open this up. So you'll just need a, uh, it's like two and a half and then a nut driver here. And don't go crazy tight here. Need enough so it still hinges. Great. All right, so we've got that part of the tool built. There's all kinds of fun to build here. And then this little guy here has a tiny little O-ring that'll go in the groove. And let's see how easy this is to do. All right, that wasn't bad. Much easier than I thought it would be. And then the side with the O-ring goes in here. Oops, sorry. It's tricky to hold it so small. So the side with the O-ring is just gonna push right into here. I'm intrigued as to what the O-ring is for. Uh, we'll find out together. And there's a bolt that'll go in and capture that from this side. Now the good news is here is none of this is permanent and none of this will ever be on the helicopter while it's spooled up, so. We don't care at all about Loctite here. That's nice and solid there. And then the last bolt here will go around the helicopter uh, and capture this together once it's in place. So, next steps from here. We've got our set screw here. And the set screw basically rests. Let's bring our helicopter body back 
into the frame here. All right, so we're gonna lay this piece, just hinge it open, drop it here. And the set screw is meant to rest on top here. This little sort of rubberized piece just sits flush there. And then we're gonna set this screw underneath. And tighten it enough once we get everything situated that it firmly clamps the boom. So, but now we're going to take this screw on the side here and we'll loosen that up such that this tool piece will slide further back. So get that as loose as it'll go. push this clamp piece in like that. So now we've got the tool up against here and then we're going to sort of basically tension the boom as much as we can by hand without going crazy. So just basically a little bit. And now this is when we're going to tighten this bottom bolt right here. So we've pulled it taut by hand. We've loosened this screw as much as possible. And now I'm going to go ahead and put pretty firm tightness on there. So now, here's what's going to happen. All right, so feel the belt tension now. And we're going to go ahead and set tension on the belt. Now, what the manual dictates is, is that I'm going to rotate this sideways here. So they've built in this anodized red piece here. And it's supposed to end up kind of center of this window once we get the tension right. So that's the ideal goal. Uh, I am going to have to release the 3D printed piece here. So we'll just pull that off. Um, so now we're kind of in the center here. Looks like we're pretty close. Uh, with a little more tension, as you can see here, it'll swing that way. So we want to be about where we're flush with the frame is the idea. So right now, see how we stick out here from the top a little? Uh, we're gonna want this little tab to sort of push back. So you'll start to see that happen as we start to tighten this bolt here. So. Uh, with one bolt, we're now going to tension the boom. And you can see the boom is starting to travel out. It doesn't take a lot. Wow, that's easy. Holy cow. Just that simple. So if you look at this piece now, you can see it's flush to the side of the frame here. And at this point, we can leisurely, we're not stressed, we're not worried about the squareness of the fin. So well designed. Um, this is really the first SAB kit I've built. I've done uh, some others uh, from other brands, but this is just really well engineered. This, this tail boom piece is, uh, is killer. So with that, there's a nice access hole here for our bolts. Let's get the correct size driver might help. And then we're gonna go ahead and sock these down. And then, Tighten this guy here, and then we're gonna come around to the bottom one. That also, looks like the access hole is on this side here. And, nope, it's here, there it is. Give me a second to find it. Everything black on black on black, it all disappears. And then we'll go ahead and tighten this side, and then boom. Oh, no pun intended, I didn't mean to say boom. That's funny, I correct myself up sometimes. And just like that, um, we have a mount. Now we can go ahead and loosen all of the screws here and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, and now with our two uh, bolts tightened here, uh, we are done. We have the boom firmly attached here. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this bolt and then loosen the bolt underneath right here and that'll remove this clamp. Just stick it in a drawer for uh, if we ever have to replace the boom. Uh, for a crash or whatnot, but uh, super well engineered tail. Uh, really impressed with the way this has gone together. Having built a number of pot and boom helicopters where you're doing this dance of trying to keep the boom square while pulling it back and tighten the screw at the same time. So to be able to do this essentially one-handed, not worry about the squareness of the tail. The tail fin's dead straight up and down, uh, completely hands-free. Uh, just so slick, super impressed here. Uh, well done SAB on that one.
like direct. <laughs>